Pfizer getting that final green light from the CDC overnight. About 15 million of doses being shipped across the country for kids ages 5 to 11. Whit Johnson is at a children's hospital in Connecticut where vaccinations are already underway. Overnight, the first shots of the Pfizer vaccine for kids 5 to 11 going into arms in Connecticut. A line of children eagerly waiting for their turn. They were talking about going to school tomorrow and telling their friends that they got it. Um, so really kind of ready to get out there and uh, get protected. The dose is coming just moments after the CDC director gave the final green light. Dr. Rochelle Walensky speaking with Robin earlier this morning. This is really just a time for parents to celebrate. We now have vaccine that's eligible for 28 million children between the ages of 5 to 11. With about 28 million children now eligible for the vaccine, some parents are eager to get their kids in line. We feel about as part of like being part of a community where it helping keeping everyone safe. But despite promising trial results, a recent poll shows 63% of parents either refuse to get their kids vaccinated or plan to wait. It's very concerning, uh, especially for five-year-olds, uh, especially elementary school. The immune system is definitely still developing. So we are back here at Connecticut Children's now, and our friend Caitlin, who is 10 years old, is getting ready to go with her vaccine. Are you ready? Okay, here it is. And it's no sweat, right? Thumbs up. Caitlin's feeling good. We've seen a bunch of kids rolling through here at Connecticut Children's. Everybody's done really well. You've been incredibly brave. And one thing to note for parents out there, even though the vaccines are authorized today, they're only available at select locations for now. Many of the major pharmacies and doctor's offices say that they hope to get their websites updated and up to speed in the next day or so before you can actually schedule an appointment. Kira? All right, Witt, thank you so much. Brave young man there. And <laughs> joining us now for more, Chief Innovation Officer at Boston Children's Hospital and ABC News medical contributor, Dr. John Brownstein. John, good to uh, see you. We just heard in Witt's report, 63% of parents still hesitant about uh, getting that shot and debating whether it's even safe to take their kids to get it, especially since the vaccine trials were far smaller than those for older age groups. Are you confident that the trials were sufficient? You know what, Kira, I am. I mean, the one thing that all experts agree on is that this vaccine needs to be based on rigorous evidence and the bar is very high for kids and the data is incredibly compelling. There is clear evidence that the vaccines are safe and effective. I mean, we saw that they pro provide an incredible efficacy around uh, symptomatic disease, 91%. But even on top of that, the safety data was incredibly strong. It was reviewed obviously by FDA, CDC, all unanimous votes. Side effects were mild and short-lived. This is the most intensive safety monitoring we've seen for any vaccine. And so, you know, of course, you know, their parents are going to be concerned. And yes, we know that, you know, COVID is less severe in kids, but it still impacts our kids in significant ways. And very similar to other infectious diseases like the flu, which we do get regular immunization for. So, you know, we have to keep reminding parents that this virus still impacts our kids. It's a top 10 leading cause of death among our kids. And these are the most studied vaccines ever produced. We already have 50 million kids in the U.S. vaccinated with, you know, limited side effects. You know, these vaccines are safe. And for me, you know, I have a 10 year old. I'm trying to get her appointment as soon as it's available, hopefully in the next several days. Well, parents are also concerned about side effects, not just long term effects, right? But side effects if they do uh, allow their child to get the shot. What can they expect? Right. So, of course, again, you know, as part of the trials, this was heavily studied. And what we found is no severe adverse events were identified. You know, many experienced what we'd expect, you know, pain at injection site, fatigue, headache, but, you know, nothing severe. You know, there's a lot of discussion around myocarditis. And even, you know, FDA asked Pfizer to expand its trials. No myocarditis was identified. And what's interesting is because this is a third of the dose that older kids got, we're actually seeing less you know, even severe symptoms than what the older kids got in the trials. And so, of course, we're going to need to monitor this, identify, you know, identify any potential signals that emerge. But so far, you know, we recognize that these vaccines are going to be incredibly safe. And, you know, I don't I don't want to tell this to my 10 year old, but it's so safe that she's probably not going to have to take a day off school like her older brother because, you know, the symptoms are just that mild. 
So a question about adults, if you don't mind, before I let you go. You know, we were traveling over the weekend and there was actually a nurse uh, sitting across from us and we were discussing the vaccine in adults. And we were talking about these breakthrough infections and how so many people that have been vaccinated uh, have gotten COVID. And she said, well, you know, we're learning that the vaccine may only be effective, you know, four, six, eight months max. Um, what are you hearing, you know, uh, among other doctors and, and where you are? And does it look like we're gonna have to start getting the COVID vaccine like we do the flu shot every year? You know, I think that, you know, there's definitely a lot of conversation about immunity waning. And I think it's not a cliff though. So what that discussion sort of made me realize is that there's some concern that maybe at four or five, six months, that you know, the protection you get from the vaccine goes away. That's not true. These vaccines continue to provide incredible prevention around serious illness and death. Yes, there's sort of, you know, over time, you'll get that immunity will go down. And especially that's of concern for older populations. Those are immunocompromised. Likely we may need that boost. You know, there are many of my colleagues that always saw these vaccines as a three dose vaccine. And so yes, you know, boosters will likely roll out, but then beyond that, the jury's still out. We just don't have enough data to suggest just whether this is going to be an annual vaccine, especially for our kids who, you know, produce such strong immune, you know, protection based on this vaccine. I think that likely it could, you know, we, we could see boosters in a couple of years, but overall, you know, I think that, you know, this could be sort of a one-time thing, but again, you know, we'll have to keep studying the data, follow the science like we always have throughout this pandemic. Dr. John Brownstein, I always appreciate you being with us in the morning. Thanks, John. Thanks, Kira. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.